we have uh, four major tools that we have developed. And the first one we started with was the sin list. And we started with this because uh, chemi chemical companies and downstream users, they're all asking us why and uh, which substances will be banned by the candidate list. So the sin list was in a way a response to those questions that we had. So we've been listing, ever since 2008, we've been listing substances that we see fulfill the reach criteria of substances of very high concern. And we have a lot of information in the background supporting their, their inclusion in the sin list. We also have sin producers too, because investors, they were very interested in knowing which companies are the ones that are producing sin chemicals, because that um, might be a financial risk for them to invest in, sub in chemicals in companies uh, producing uh, sin chemicals. It's very, very influential in the investors world because everyone is asking the same questions there as the companies for the sin list. Which companies will be affected and how? The third tool we have is similarity. Similarity is made to empower downstream users because downstream users often have very little knowledge on chemicals. They are non-experts, they are laymen when it comes to chemicals and they don't really know what are the substances they are using and whenever they need a substitute. Because if they hear that BPA is a hazardous substance, what should they use instead? So far, they've been told, okay, you can use BPS instead, and then you can use BPF instead. Or for the phthalates, you're going from one band of phthalate to the next, to the next, to the next, creating an unsustainable spiral or chain of bad substitution. And we have to see the same thing as well with the bromidate or flame retardants. Minor changes to the molecule as such. It's not restricted, it's not banned, but it have the same hazardous properties. And this is what Cinemarity want to break this chain. We want to empower the downstream users to ask informed questions. Are you sure this is a substance which is actually safer than BPA? Because we can see in the Cinemarity too that it has similar properties as the BPA. And then they, it raises a warning flag for the downstream users so they can see, oh, this is actually a better substitute or it's not a better substitute. Similarity is sector-wide. Anyone can use it, any sector, it doesn't really matter. It's all about identifying potential hazards in uh, worse and regretful substitution. The fourth tool is the textile guide, which is very sector-specific only for the textile industry because the textile industry have a very diverse and long supply chain. The, a brand or anyone in the supply chain, they can look at what are the criteria they have to fulfill to, to deliver safe, uh, safe uh, textile or safe products to my customers. And then they can ask informed questions again to their suppliers. What are the ones I should stay away from? And they can tell the suppliers, don't use these because I have demands from my customers we have to move out of them. There's 450 million of EU citizens and they are affected daily by hazardous chemicals. So it has become a societal problem and as well as an environmental problem. And uh, that is why Chemsic Vision is a world free of hazardous chemicals and hazardous man-made chemicals to be very precise because we are really making, working to make it happen. Uh, but of course, e-regulation and a particular reach is one of the most uh, and strongest chemical regulation worldwide today. And in reach, there's a very strong driver to use safer substitutes instead of the bad substances, the substances of very high concern. There's a very strong driver within reach and also other reg regulation to a certain extent to phase out and substitute hazardous ones for safer alternatives. And that is why we're working on it, and that's why it's so important to have a strong chemistry regulation in the EU.